Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> I don't know what happened there. My apologies. So, as stated, we um, we got the. Um, I just realized I got a token on the floor. One second. <clears throat> we advanced the squire all the way to level six. Don't know if you had a chance to see this. So he has four health points now. Two actions. He hits on a seven. He has a divine power, which is minor heal. So that means now, when we roll this die now, he gets to add one to his dice. So he's now rolling five dice instead of four. <clears throat> he gets the minor heal spell, which is just like the paladin spell. He now has a toughness token of one, and uh, he has the leather armor. And the leather armor looks like so, with a four on it. Okay, and then um, he also gets Bestow 3, which gives either two experience points, four divinity, or two toughness every time he moves into a new room, um, what, when your liege does. But um, we were just talking uh, before the video ended of possibly getting the haste spell. It costs six divinity to cast, but it's, it's reaction, so it doesn't cost an action. But um, every time we play a location or activate an objective, which is almost like moving into a room, um, move the timer back one space each time. So it lets us, uh, and it's limit once per location, which means we're gonna be able to cast it for every location. And so we're gonna get three from him every time we move into a location and then spend six on this, which is a net loss, but um, it's still not a bad deal. So I'm very much looking at the haste. Um, the next one here was Divine Storm, which is exactly like the Fireball spell. Um, and uh, it's range zero though, so she does not have to move forward. So at range zero, she can wound somebody with a roll of a seven, and she's gonna roll four dice. There is a penetration of one, which is helpful, and you can buy some holy water to roll an additional attack die. And you might be wondering, oh, where's the holy water? It's somewhere here in the uh, mundane gear. Um, right there. It only costs copper. And see, this is a counter. So you can have four of them per hero. So we can have four holy waters. Actually, I'm going to set that aside. We might want to do that. You can have four holy waters, and, you know, that's basically a gold. And you can spend those each mission to um, add dice. I mean, that's not bad at all. Um, the holy water adds also adds plus one to our heal. So when we do heal, we could heal more. All right, so that's Divine Storm. Not a bad spell at all. You need to have two or more powers. So, for example, our mini-me couldn't take this one. It's um, it's a pretty good spell, and it's range zero. So, uh, not bad. Let there be light. I would swear somebody gets that spell. Maybe it's not her. Maybe it was one of our um, cleric in the boxes that we were looking at. I think it is. I think this is on one of our cleric in the boxes. So let's look at this one. It's a reaction. Uh, cast when any hero is expending a torch. Reduce the location's entrance cost by one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, this is a stronger heal. Cost six. It heals four wounds or six. Um, we can't take that one anyways. You need power of three. Action blessing. Select one hero each hero turn to gain one additional action for the turn. It costs two experience points to retain. So you cast it once, and then every single turn you have to spend <coughs> two experience points to keep it active. It does give you actions, but man, is that expensive. I don't know. Um, I like it, but it's expensive. Divine Insight. Cost five. I can't take it yet. I need three power. It's a uh, range zero or one and you're just gonna gain experience points. That's a crappy one. We don't need anything to give us experience points. Uh, take heart, remove vulnerables. That's not bad. Um, 
Ward. When a hostile is about to attract or roll for guards, cancel the attract or guard roll. Cost is equal to two times the total printed health of the hostiles. Also not bad. The Ravens. All heroes in the adventure add plus two plus zero against flying hostiles. If we have a flying hostile, that's pretty good. Um, otherwise, I don't understand it. It's very situational. Stand firm. So this is probably the equivalent of what the uh, cleric gets. Cost is either two divinity or one divinity or one experience point. Um, when a hero is suffering a vulnerable, they can suffer one less. Um, so this is the strategy that other players really swear by, is every time you're going to gain a vulnerable, just use stand firm. Um, the cost is not that bad, to be honest. Um, I would say this is a good card. I can totally understand why people really rely on this. And it's a nice reaction, so you only have to use it when you need it. Um, it's almost as good as that minor deflect that we have. Um, so, what do we take? That is the ultimate question. What do we take? I'm almost leaning to... We should take Divine Storm. Well, that's... Okay, this is on my list of wants. Um, it does not cat toss two actions like it does for the wizard, which is one of the reasons why I think I like it. You're rolling an explosion of four dice, possibly five. So you're rolling an explosion of four dice. Yeah, you need a seven to hit. That's probably the biggest issue. Um, but I actually think I'm going to take the haste spell. The haste spell, to me, is just a no-brainer, must-have, you know, type of situation. Um, I think this will be next on our list. So I don't know, Wombat Girl, how did I do? Because I know this is your, your... Your favorite character so hopefully I'm, I'm doing you a solid we put the ring of, of stunning on here so we can get extra hits and as far as the potion goes I'm just gonna tuck this up in the corner I'm not buying any yet but we might soon okay so all that was just to because we upgraded our paladin we still have four gold left we could upgrade Gareth the fighter for three gold and what we would get in exchange is an extra card per round and another toughness, plus a movement point. That's actually not bad. That movement point is probably the biggest one. Or for three gold, we can get the, the human wizard off to Schneid, and that would give her a better lore and one more focus, but it doesn't help us any. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade Gareth for three. So he's now fourth level, and that's going to give him a movement point, which is huge. And then he's also going to have three toughness. I'm just looking to see how many toughness tokens I have that are a one or a two. There we go. So we're going to have a two and a one, like that. Okay, so that costs three of our four gold, so we have one gold left. I could use it to buy holy water potions, like I said. Um, <clears throat> I am going to sit tight with this money. I have one gold left. I can upgrade our thief over here, the mini-me, but we just said that there's no benefit to doing so. So we're just going to save the gold because we got a lot of level ups for the paladin, Gareth, and the wizard still left to go. And we will do that on this next adventure. So um, <clears throat> I know I had to end that last video and start this one. I actually wanted to go get dinner, but now I'm in the middle of this one. <laughs> so uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and continue. What time is it? Let me check. All right. Yeah, so we're doing Oldfield. So it looks like it has yield gore. <clears throat> so we're going to get five gold for completing this. This, by the way, is the last common um, adventure we have on our list. We're going to do two nuisance, one common. Time is eight. And the fire caves is our adventure. Mm -hmm. 
So if our time is eight, the timer goes up and we're doing two nuisance, one adventure. So the fire cave is gonna go here and we get the queen. It is not flying. <clears throat> I thought it would be, but it's a uh, fire minus two. So it's a little immune to our fire spells. It has six health, um, but the ice actually can hurt it. And there we go. Um, fire ants go with them. So our fire spells are not gonna do very good against these guys. trying to find the fire ants. Right there. So yeah, they're gonna, <coughs> our wizard is not gonna make much of an impact here, but there's what we're up against. So let's, oh, I just had another beep. I'm getting paranoid now that my software froze last time. Let me just check. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's start with how many experience points did we get just for starting the mission? One from the squire, two from the paladin for three, two more from the fighter for five, and one from the crossbow weapon for whatever reason for six. So six experience points. done. <clears throat> okay, we got our toughness out, our luck, our focus. The wizard is still at just two focus. I'm refreshing all the action tokens. Okay, let's start with Oldfield. We're invited to a feast. We roll lore plus two for one hero with toughness to gain two more toughness. I don't care about that that much. So I'm not even going to spend the experience point to boost the roll. And we rolled a three, which is crap. So we don't get that. And then Oldfield the town. I'm going to let you freeze. And then you can freeze again. The entrance will take you through more chambers than normal. Insert one nuisance location before the first specified location. This outer chamber is guarded by fire ants. So we're going to draw them during the hostile card instead of its regular hostile. Um, if you're feeling particularly powerful, locals will tell you of a little known secondary entrance. By doing so, you also gain extra time to reach the queen you can add one turn to the time. You have a great chance to earn much needed treasure and experience before encountering the queen. So we'll get to fight the fire ants if we want. That would insert another location. Now that we have the haste spell, <clears throat> I almost don't care. And so uh, let me look at the fire ants card here. So we're looking at um, one silver, one copper, which is a good drop. There's only six of them. Our fire spell is not going to do very well against them, but they do have a B hit of plus two. So even though the fire gets penalized, they have a B hit of plus two. So they're going to cancel each other out. So it's just a normal fire spell. <clears throat> they do attract a creature if they roll high enough. Um, they're not that bad. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to add one to the timer. So our timer is at nine and we're going to add one location. So now we got to have three nuisance and one common, and the fire ants are going to be the uh, the nuisance enemy we're going to draw for that first location. Very interesting. Okay, <coughs> um, now we're going to draw our cards. Oop, I got to shuffle first.
So I'm starting to, so this is our last common one. And like I said, we got two, four, we have five more missions to go. Um, the renowned, two of them. And, uh, oh, actually we only have four missions left to go. Two renowned, one legendary, and one mythical. So um, we are going to gain some gold at the end of this one. Probably not nearly as much as we gained last time because we, I don't think we're going to get another prisoner, which was a huge amount of gold. Um, the This mission, though, should get us, I mean, because we had 11, we had about 16 gold last time. Uh, this mission should get us around 8 to 10. Uh, we're going to get 5 just for defeating it. So that's half of it right there. So we want to at least get maybe another 5 from the monsters and whatnot. Um, so here's where my thoughts were. I'm just trying to think, like, am I going to be able to level everybody up all the way? And the answer is this is really tough because this paladin needs a crap ton of gold to level up. That's the one drawback to her. Um... I like her, but yeah, she just needs a lot of gold um, compared to what a cleric would need. We could start looking into, you know, getting better weapons. I'm still running around with an old longsword for for Gareth, for example. <clears throat> um, part of me, though, hasn't needed it, so that's why I'm not, you know, gung-ho about going out to get them. But I can only imagine the enemies are going to start getting a little bit tougher as we move on. We're still fighting nuisance enemies most of the time. So I figure this adventure is our last chance to just get a bunch of gold to level ourselves up. And then once we get into the renowned adventures, I might start to run into some trouble and need to start, you know, upgrading my equipment. I don't know. That's just where my head is. So with that being said, uh, let's say we get 10 gold from this mission. And like I said, we got two renowned missions. So let's say we get uh, 12 gold from that. Those that would be 24. We're gonna we're looking at 34 gold. Then we have one legendary. Let's say that one gives us 15. Uh, 34. That's 39 gold. That's still this is a very tight economy game. Holy crap! 39 is not enough. <clears throat> you might think, well, that's a lot of gold, Jeff. It's not enough. I mean. Uh, the so the paladin here is sitting at 17 at level 3 in order to get to level 6 she has to spend 6, 8, 14 24, 26 gold just for the paladin you need 26 gold just to get the paladin up to level 6 and we haven't even talked about the other characters yet now the other characters don't go up to 40 like she does but still it's it's a crap ton of gold we need, folks. Okay, so let's start with the Paladin. Uh, one, two, four, five, six. Yep, we got, oh my gosh, we got two location markers already. All right. And then one, two, three, four, five, six for the fighter. One, two, three, four, five, six for the wizard. and the rogue. Okay. So starting with the paladin, she's got two location markers. We're gonna discard those, grab two nuisance locations, and so here's an interesting one. This has two monsters on it, but remember per the rules, only fire ants are gonna be in the first room. So if we play this as the first room, we don't have to deal with the two. So uh, that's really nice. I'm going to go ahead and probably do that. And then this one looks nice too. It's got a nice zero here. So both those locations are great. I'm looking at the uh, fighter now. He got nothing. The wizard. Nothing. And the rogue. Got one. Two. So the rogue got two. So we need to do one, two, three nuisance locations and one common. So I'm going to draw one nuisance, one common. Uh, 
That one's a good one. We like this one. So the nuisances are all covered. And here's the common. Place to rest. That's a nice zero. Uh, it's a fodder room. And we can restore one wound to each hero. That's a beautiful room. Holy cow. Yeah, we got all the rooms we need to do the entire adventure. So I'm going to go ahead and play this torchlit corridor. And we actually find one torch for this. So this is a great one to start the game with. And yes, those fire ants are going to be there. And I should have had a torch card. Maybe I put it away. I'm looking. I know I'm taking a while, but I'm noticing some stuff and I want to, I'm setting it aside because we probably want to buy those and I'll explain them to you in a second. Okay, I found the torch card. So we basically have a torch card, expend to permanently reduce an adjacent interior and night entrance cost by one. Um, so we have these little torch tokens and you just put them on like so to show that you have one torch. Um, <clears throat> actually, technically you're supposed to do it this way That shows that you have one torch, and then you put these torch tokens on the room. And the reason it has a minus one is if you put that on the room, it's showing that the entrance cost is reduced by one. But I just put them on the card directly. I don't, you know, uh, mess with it. So we happen to have one torch. So if we ever need to use one, we can. And then here's where I was going off. Um, we actually have a gold left, and we're gonna spend it before we start this mission. Because I totally forgot we have boots and stuff. And we're going to buy some silent boots for our rogue. Add two to your shadow rolls. So our, our rogue is going to get a plus two to all of his shadow rolls. So Because we want him to always be in the shadows, so why not? And then I set aside some other stuff. Add two to your pick rolls. But that costs two gold. And then we have fine leather boots that each add one to your movement value. So that would be nice to give to people as well um, because that's going to cost less cards for them to move around and do their thing. And looking at Aaron here, he only costs 30 to get to level 6. So at level 4 for him, he would also have two divine powers. And really the difference here is if you choose Aaron instead of the Paladin, um, he has a loadout of... 10. He can carry as much stuff as the Paladin. So in fact, she has a loadout of 10. He gets a hand-to-hand -hand of 2. Um, he's just as good as the Paladin. With the one exception, I don't know if he has the melee speed skill. Uh, I'll have to check, because clerics have their own deck, which means that he can spend a card to, you know, to draw an action. Um, he's not going to have... There's no liege follower for the cleric. So... The squire is giving divinity every time you move into a room. He wouldn't have that. Uh, that's the only thing. Um, so as much as I love the paladin, he's actually arguably better. Um, because the you know he doesn't have humble, so we don't have to worry about that. He doesn't cost 43 points to level up to level 6 like the paladin does. The only advantage to having the paladin is you get to bring along the squire. So... Um, that's really the, the key thing there. And I'm wondering if a battle mage is better than a wizard. I There's a little bit of thoughts there. So here's the cleric spells right there. Melee speed. So for four gold, he can get it, just like the paladin did. So these skills are, I mean, not to pick on DVG or anything. They, they basically rinsed and repeated with a lot of this stuff. So, um... Okay, enough of that. We place our location. 
we got our fire ants in the next room. Uh, they're going to draw six. We could move into the room and deal with them. Or wait. Uh, the room is a fodder room, but that's okay. We're going to wait, and here's why. Um, I can cast for six divinity, haste, and because we just placed a location, so we're going to add one timer, one to the timer. So now the torch is up to ten. Uh, that did cost me six divinity, though. But we're going to get some back as soon as we move into the next room. <coughs> so that means now... If we're not moving into the next room, well, we can. It's just that I basically just added one to the timer. So the action cost is going to be one to go into the next room. The striking distance is zero actions. So the question is going to be, I do have a charge. I know this is crazy because I'm relying on the fact that I'm going to draw the other ones, but I think I'm going to charge. I don't want to stay in this room. I want to go into the fodder room, which will let me get a bunch of experience points. So we're going to charge into the room. We're going to pay three experience points, and that pays the action for everybody to move in. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well. It only costs one to go into that room. And then, of course, to go into striking is going to be free. So we're all going to, we're all going to be able to go into this room <coughs> and attack these fire ants with two actions each. Because I played that card. <coughs> Sir Squire Nathaniel has one movement. But the Paladin does not. So she is going to pay one card. trying to figure out why she's so short on cards. She played the location. She Oh, she played the charge, and she just did this. Okay, so Paladin's going to move into the room, and we're going to move these off like this. Paladin moves into the room, and we gain three divinity back for that. Because of the bestow skill. The squire moves in for free because he has a movement of one. The Our master rogue moves in for free with a one. And then the other one moves in. Uh, we're going to have to spend a card for him. But we gain a copper. He's all about the money. And by adding this extra room in the adventure, uh, we're going to get another copper. So <laughs> don't spend it all in one place, right? Um, yeah, and so then the rogue will discard a card to make that happen. So then um, we're just going down the line here. We got the wizard who needs to spend a card. Done. And then uh, the fighter. Done. So we're all in the room now. And to move up is a free action. But we will get a reaction. So let me reorder these guys. Player six is getting ganged up on. So I'm still going to move the wizard up. Even though she doesn't get any nice bonuses, she's still our best shot at killing more than one. So we're going to move her up, and then we're going to let um, them attack Gareth. So it's a 4-3. Um, they miss if it's seven or less. So Gareth is going to take a vulnerable. And yeah, the wizard's going to spend two attack actions and a experience point to roll four dice against these guys. So there's an eight and a seven. I need a uh, six to hit. So there's two hits. Here's the fourth die. So two hits and two misses. And now we're going to roll the two misses. And they still miss. So we killed two. We're going to kill two of the six guys. 
and they get to counterattack again, so now they're going to attack the Paladin. So they rolled a 9 this time. That's attract 1. It doesn't actually do a wound, it just attracts another one. So now they got another one right there. Okay, so... Hmm. Well, we probably should have blew the horn. And my thoughts on this are just because we moved into the room, and how many more times are we going to do that? I don't know. Uh, I think I am going to retcon that. We're going to blow the horn. So let's do it. Uh, divinity powers now are two. So she rolls six dice. A six or less gives us actions. So there's one. Two. So uh, two extra actions. I'm going to give both of them to the wizard. And um, then for the other one, Raw, uh, he rolls, I think, five dice now. Yes. So that's three. And that's a miss. Uh, oh, he rolls five dice. Both are misses. So he puts three vulnerables out. Okay, I need to pause real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. Looking at the situation. I might want to place those vulnerables differently. Okay. <clears throat> if I put all those vulnerables on one creature, that'll allow the squire to get a whole bunch of divinity points. And yeah, I am, that's sort of how I'm viewing this. So I'm going to go ahead and put all the vulnerables. So I'm going to put one, two, three, all on number four here. I mean, we still got three guys that haven't, uh, haven't attacked yet. I'm aware of that. But we're going to put all the vulnerables on number four here. And that's going to allow Sir Nathaniel, our squire, to get the most bang for his buck. Okay, so we went up with our wizard. And I don't believe we've attacked yet. So we're going to go ahead and attack right now. We're going to spend one experience point to be able to roll four dice. And if I did attack, one, two, three, four, nope, I see there's five of them there. So we somehow killed one. Oh, no, we killed two. And then we gained an attract one because of an attack. So my apologies. The wizard already went. I just forgot to flip the things over. And then when I took a break, I was gone for quite a while. So <laughs> I apologize there. That's just me not doing good uh, accounting here. So we need to get somebody else up there is, is the answer to this question. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, first of all, we're going to roll for our mini rogue. That's a seven. The room gives him two for a nine. He is in stealth. And then the major rogue is an eight, also in stealth. So we got both of them in shadows, which is good. Um, I do have a vulnerable on one of my characters, but it's not an awful thing. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move. Let's move the squire forward, and then we'll go ahead and have number two attack. So that's a miss. So a vulnerable goes onto the wizard. And. Got 
pause one more time. Sorry. Okay. Um, so my biggest realization is I probably shouldn't have moved the squire forward because the squire is going to attack somebody who already attacked. So we got two guys there that we want to kill that haven't attacked yet. Um, so just for lack of a thing, I'm going to go ahead and attack one of them with the squire because I do get two actions. So we might as well spend one. So there's a five and a three. The five, of course, isn't enough. So we're going to put a vulnerable on one of these. So I'll go ahead and put it on this one and then have that one attack next. So a six is a miss. So that's a vulnerable on our rogue. The master rogue. And then, uh, yeah, I, we're just going to let them attack us all across the board, I guess. The squire is going to try to finish off the one with all the vulnerables. And of course, he rolls really well this time. Doesn't even need the help. So we kill it. And yes, I played that very unoptimally, if that's a word, inefficiently. So, um, but we do, because it had three vulnerables on it, we gain three divine power. That was the whole point of this, and it was an extremely um, roundabout way to go about just getting divine power, but it, yeah. So now this guy gets to attack, and we the inefficient part is we could have killed these guys before they had a chance to attack. So um, uh, there's another. I I've been rolling really well in terms of them missing. So we got a vulnerable on our thief in shadows, our mini me. So the paladin and the fighter have tons of actions left. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the the paladin here. And yeah, she'll discard a card to do a free attack. And we're gonna attack the vulnerable one. And sure enough, that's a bam bam. It's a hit. And actually that would have been a miss, but because the vulnerable was on it, it's a good kill. And so that gives her one divinity point. Normally two, but she has humble. And uh, she still has two actions left, but we're gonna roll down the line. They're gonna have the fighter get rid of a card. And then he'll use his bonus action Let's try to kill one. There you go. That kills one. Uh, does it even matter? We'll kill number five. Um, we're going to use our mini rogue to remove two vulns. There's a lot of them out there. And I think we're going to use the master rogue, one of his actions, to remove a vulnerable off the wizard. And then the other one, he's going to draw cards. Let me look at his cards first. One, two, three, four, five. So he's going to discard three cards and then draw four. All right. That's done. So the rogue is done. I know the enemies aren't killed yet, but the paladin I'm uh, going to roll. Uh, holy crap, that's a miss. So the paladin just missed uh, an action that I thought was never going to miss. That became a three. So a vulnerable's out on one of them. And then the fighter will spend one action. And oh my gosh. Now I'm... So that one becomes a three which becomes a five because of the vulnerable. It's still not enough. So now we got somebody out here with a plus four on him. So we're gonna go ahead and use the other action for the paladin to kill him. I was expecting to that we were gonna get to draw some cards. This is totally backfiring, but that's okay. Um, we got the kill. That is another uh, Divinity point, just one. And then the fighter is going to have to use his last action to finish this thing off. Uh, and he fails. So uh, round comes to an end. Everybody replenishes their actions. I mean, I guess.
guess I'm not as concerned because we have the ability to get extra time now because of the haste spell. So uh, he's back up as well, but you know I could pretty much kill him with anybody I want now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the fighter, where he's gonna just so Gareth is gonna discard a card and use a bonus action to uh, to attack him. And there's your nine right there. So that's as good as dead. And so uh, I'm going to keep the card here because it's the Guardian. But we get a silver and a copper. And we're going to get five experience points. And we're in a fodder room. So we actually get 11 experience points. So that was a great run. I, um, you know, it took a little longer to kill him, but that doesn't matter. We didn't take any wounds. That was a great run. So, and then I said 11 experience points. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm... Again, I'm maximizing our stuff here, right? So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we've got all kinds of awesome experience. Okay, so with the next round here, we start to place two nuisance and one. Uh, non-nuisance, I guess you would call it. So here's our uh, first nuisance card going down. It is a blade trap. And, well, actually, let me think about this. Maybe I want to... Because that also has a zero. Let's look at the other one. Here we go. This one has a one. Because we're going to stay in our room and uh, make them come to us. So I'm going to play this one down. It's a locked door. And uh, once we get there, we have to do a lockpick thing, or otherwise we move the timer forward. But I'm going to place this card. Uh, it does generate one nuisance monster. And at the same time, um, we get to sp spend six divinity to add one timer to the track. So now we're back up to ten time again. I'm probably going to overkill this time thing. Uh, we're not going to move to the next room because it is free to move into striking range in our current room. So uh, the monster is going to be some giant rats, nine of them. And uh, crazy, I was crazy once. I was locked in a room full of rats. All right, we got to do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and So there you go. Now remember, they're in the other room, so we got a whole round to do actions. And so we're going to be able to remove Volms and draw cards. So the Paladin is going to draw four cards. Let me back the camera up a little bit here. So there's a decent one. It's actually the exact picture we're fighting. And so the Paladin actually has two good cards, or actually three. And then these three, we can take her to leave it. Um, that's OK. So the Paladin can go again. That's the thing. Like, there's nothing for us to do. Uh, we can move into the next room. But I don't see that come to our advantage. So I'm going to just discard three cards and draw three more. I'm going to keep that one card. Here's one to keep. And then this is a junk, and that's a junk. So that's good. We uh, we did that. So now we got the fighter here. I like these two cards. I don't like those, so we'll discard two. And he's going to draw four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to keep this one. 
and discard those three. He's going to draw three more. So we're just culling the deck right now and getting some cards that we want. So wizard, same thing. I'm looking at everything here and we're going to discard all but one card. So now she's going to draw five. And we're going to discard all five, draw five more. All right, and we're going to get rid of this one. Not get rid of, we're going to play it, and we're going to spend the experience point to gain a silver. So that's the best play ever. Done. Now we get to the rogue. And he's going to discard three and draw four. One, two, three, four. And look at that. So we're going to play that for a silver and keep these two and discard that one. So he now has four. Yeah, and then he's going to draw two. There we go. All right. So spend another experience point, and now we get another silver. So we got our uh, our two silver for the cards, which is what we always want. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end the round. We have plenty of time on our clock. So they're going to move into our room, and then we're going to murder, death, kill. So these guys have a swarm plus two. Uh, no bonuses or penalties beyond that. So we're going to go ahead and move the wizard in. Attack player one. That's a big fat miss, but a vulnerable does come on. And then we're going to spend an experience point and roll four dice. And shoot, shoot, shoot those fireballs. So we need a six to hit. So we have two misses so far. Here's the fourth die. So we got two hits. And then because of our pyromancy, we get to reroll two of them. And we got a third hit and then another miss. So three hits. I will take it. So we're going to go one, two, and oof. All right, that was both of her actions, unless I want to get cute and do more stuff, which I don't think I do. Um, so now another one goes. We're going to go ahead and attack the wizard. That's a big miss again, but a vulnerable comes out. And um, we're going to move in with the Paladin. So we'll have them attack player three. A four is a miss, but a vulnerable goes on to the Squire. Paladin's going to do action one, attack. We're going to attack um, one of hers. So she rolled a one, which is a miss, but the five penetrates. So vulnerable goes on. Okay. Um, so that was a big miss. So now the paladin, oh, now they get to go. So uh, I'm going to have them attack player six. It is a four, four good buddy. So that's just another bone. It goes on to the rogue. And I'll have the Paladin attack again. I'm going to attack the last one who hasn't gone yet. And that's a one. This is a four. But she has a plus one hand to hand. So she does make it a five, which is enough to hit with the mace. The mace does apply a minus one to this. So this becomes a zero. But the rats have a zero on them. So um, she barely did it, but she did kill the last one before it had a chance to attack. So both of her actions are done. She could spend a card 
to do a third action. I don't think I will at this point. Um, so I'm just going to wait and see what everybody else does. Uh, I'm going to move the squire in. And we're going to attack the one that has vulnerable in it so he can get a, a divinity. And so there's an eight, which is a kill. And that one is dead. And he gains one divinity for that. Um, now he's going to... Um, uh, well, he'll wait to use his other action, but I think he's going to want to remove a vulnerable. Uh, and actually, he gets two divinity because he has a vulnerable on himself as well as the enemy having one. All right, we got three actions potentially with the fighter. So we're going to go ahead and go in, attack one. Uh, that's a two, which becomes a four. It's not enough. So vulnerable goes on the enemy. Uh, he's going to attack another one, a different one. That's a five, which becomes a seven. That's a kill. So that's both of his actions. We have our, we got our rogues. We need to see if they're in shadows. Here's the mini. He rolled a 10. He's in shadows. The master rolled a one. He has the boots, which makes it a three. And the room adds two more, which makes it a five. And as long as he spends that experience point, uh, which he did, I know I didn't declare it. I'm sorry, that's a retcon. Yeah, he's in shadows. So, okay, now what do I wanna do? I mean, we have a lot of vulnerabilities out. We got three enemies to kill. Uh, the paladin and the fighter can both spend cards to attack again. I don't want to because then I gotta draw cards. And I don't know if I wanna draw cards. I wanna get, I wanna move into this next room if we can. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I wanna get into this next room if we can. You know what, we're gonna get a chance to draw cards again. So Paladin's going to discard one, and let's roll. Who am I attacking? <coughs> one of the two over there. That's a kill. So that's a divinity point for the Paladin. <coughs> and then the Fighter will go ahead and do one as well. Who's he attacking? Uh, that one. He rolled a two. His hand-to-hand -hand is two more for four. That's a big fat miss for him. Ah, he gets to draw two cards at the start of the turn. Why do I keep forgetting that? So we're going to do that. Now, he can't have more than six, so I'm looking at him here. One, two, three. So uh, he does have to discard two cards, which makes it, it's going to leave him at five. Why? Because we we played a card to do an extra attack. So um, he shouldn't have six in his hand right now. But that's something I, I keep forgetting to do. And let's add it to the sticky notes here. All right. So he missed. So now we're going to have we're going to shoot our crossbow with um, our rogue here at the vulnerable one. It ruled a 10, so it didn't need it at all. But we killed him. Uh, the rogue has one more action left. He could do some card stuff. One, two, three, four. He actually has six cards. He's not going to do any card stuff. He'll use his extra action to get rid of a vulnerable. And then we have our other rogue who hits on a nine. He is in shadows. So that means he'll hit on a seven. And he's going to go after the last guy. We're going to attack. We're not going to remove Volans. So there's a nine. That's a kill. So he still has one action left, and he will remove a vulnerable uh, from the wizard. Okay, we are... Ah, uh, the, the squire had one action left, so he will also remove a Voln. So we're at the end of the round. Everybody gets the actions back.
the timer drops to eight. I'm sorry, I almost had to sneeze. I'm in a fodder room, so I get nine experience for this and four for that, so that's 13. So that's a lot of experience. I need to stop being cheap. One, two, three, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I am literally out of experience tokens. I have every experience token in the game right there. DVG did not intend for anybody to have that much experience points, but I do. And then we get a silver. So we'll grab one of those bad boys. All right. Um, next round, I already moved the timer. So here's what I, I don't want to do. I don't want the hostile to come out yet. So we're going to not play a hostile card. We are going to spend a whole action just to move to the next room. So we're technically here. We're going to move here. This is a lockpick room. So for example, we're going to move the uh, rogue in for one action, and then he's going to have to lockpick for the second action. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the, the entrance cost to the room is zero, and that was on purpose. So all he has to do is just spend his actions. He's moving in. We're going to spend an experience point for him to pick the lock. And that eight is an absolute slam on the lock picking. And he's in. Player five. Spend an action to move in. And then one to remove a vulnerable from Gareth the fighter. Uh, player four. Action to move in. And then she's going to... She has five cards. She'll discard one and draw two for her second action. Fair enough. The uh, pal or the squire moves in. Doesn't have anything to do. Uh, Gareth gets to draw two cards at the start of his turn. You thought I forgot, didn't you? So he drew his two cards. Uh, he doesn't spend any to actually move. So one, two, three, four, five. I get to keep six cards. So I only have to discard one of them and it's gonna be a location marker. So he will move and um, he doesn't even need to draw cards. So we're not gonna do that. Then uh, the wizard has one, two, three, four, five cards herself. So she will move and draw one card at least to get back up to six. Okay, uh, that's all we're gonna do. So we're gonna end the night. Oh, because we moved, um, three divinity to our paladin. And one copper for the good guys. Okay. Now we move down to seven on the timer. Next card is coming out because we're starting the turn and we're gonna play the last nuisance room, which is the blade trap. So we're gonna move into that room because the action cost to go into striking is zero. Now it does draw a nuisance hostile. So let's see what we're getting. We're getting an orc swordsman. There's four of them. These guys are pretty easy. One, two, three, four. Uh, the only thing about them is they don't get any bonuses or anything. So uh, we gotta spend an action to move in and the cost to move in that room is three. So it is brutal. Right now I can spend six divinity to move the timer back I am not. We're doing fantastic. So, um, got to figure out how to pay for this. Uh, our final room has a cost of four. So we need those cards that reduce our cost by one. 
this is actually going to be tough to move in and, and do this, but um, I have faith that we can pull this off. So let's start with the rogue. He has a movement of one. He needs to move in and pick the trap. Now, when he does that, uh, they are going to get to counterattack against him. But uh, we're going to be fine. So he will spend one action to move in. He has to pay an entrance cost of three. He has one movement, so he has to pay an entrance cost of two. So I'm looking at his cards here. And these are the two cards we're going to play for his entrance. And then he's going to play a quiet card to help him pick that lock. So we're going to do that right now and an experience point. I don't even think he can fail. Uh, so he automatically passes the lock pick, which then gives him three experience points. So we are now, we busted the game. I don't even have a token to represent this. So I'm going to give him an arrow token. Okay, um, and then they're going to attack him. So number six here. And it is a, sorry, I'm all zoomed in and and up forward. So we drew, we rolled a, they rolled a six, which is a miss, but that does put a vulnerable on our rogue. So he's got a vulnerable now. And I didn't even bother to see if he was in shadows because his turn's already done. Okay, so um, that is him. Everybody else is in the other room still. And we're going to move that up by one. Okay, in doing so, we gain another copper. All right, uh, now we got to get the wizard in. So that would be one action to move in. And she has to spend three cards to get there. Uh, she has three, so she'll do it. All right, the move in doesn't trigger the monsters at all. Um, the move up, however, does. So she'll move up and this one will attack her. Seven is a miss still, um, but it still puts a vulnerable on her. And then she's going to spend her action to attack and we're gonna spend four experience points. I mean, why wouldn't I? Uh, we got so many experience points, so we'll spend four to be the other half of the attack. All right, and then we're going to spend another experience point to make it four dice. All right, she hits on a six. Here we go. Uh, there's one hit, two hits, and a miss. Rolling the fourth die. That's three hits. Now I'm going to roll for the miss. Still a miss, but three hits kills the final two. And this one, so we killed three of the four. So that's well done. All right, so she's done. Now we're going to move in with uh, Gareth for one action. And he only needs two cards because he has a movement point now. So he will spend the two cards to get in there. And he can move up for free and he can use, he can spend a card to do this final action. I'm just looking real quick. Do we need to do a luck pick anymore? And the answer is no. So since we don't need to do luck pick anymore, I'm gonna get rid of this quiet card and he'll do a bonus attack. A three becomes a five. It's a miss, but we put a vulnerable in it. <clears throat> okay, the paladin needs to get in there. She still has, she has to spend three cards to do it. Uh, she's going to have to give up a good one. So she's going to have to give up a swarm, but that's okay. Here's her three cards. She is in. We don't want to spend her other action unless it's to draw more cards, I think. 
Now we got to figure out how to get our underlings in. The uh, squire needs two cards to get in. I'm just looking to see if anybody has two cards to spare. And they really don't. But the wizard has... Nope. So what we're going to do then is we're going to use the second action for the paladin. And we're going to draw four cards to get back up to our hand size. One, two, three, four. So that's a nice one. Let's go is really nice. So we got some cards that are helpful. Ah, we forgot. The fighter gets to draw two cards. So, okay. So between the fighter and the paladin, we can come up with two cards now. Here's the two cards. That's going to help the squire to get there. And of course, since the paladin went first, that means she gets three divinity. So three more divinity added to her pool. Okay, last but not least, we got to get the, the minion rogue there. But it also needs three cards. So I'm looking at my actions here. The fighter can draw cards still. Um, He's going to discard one card and be able to draw three. Oops. One, two, three. And he drew some really good ones. So I got to be really careful about what I spend here. I need three for him to be able to move. That's a lot. Um, so we're going to spend a second strike and a move and another move from another character. I don't like getting rid of those move cards, but that's what we got to do. We got to get them in the room. So now we got everybody in the room. And yeah, we got to now get in the business of killing this guy off. So the squire um, uh, still has an action left. So that's a vulnerable, which will give him, that gives him a divinity. And now I got to make change again. So give me a second. There we go. So we got him a divinity. All right, so we rolled a three. Um, it becomes a five, but he needs a seven, so the squire missed. So no good, no go for the squire. Uh, lonely is the night for him. So now we're going to see if our minion is in shadows. He is in shadows. So he's going to go ahead and attack for one action. That nine is enough to do it. So we kill the final guy. And then, of course, he has one more action left. No, he doesn't. He spent an action to move in the room. So we got some Vones on us, but... Uh, all right, so we gain one silver and four more experience points. Here comes the silver. And then one, two, three, four. We're now maxed out again on our experience. We've used every token. They're all in their max values. Okay. So uh, we get our actions back. The timer moves down. We got plenty of time. I don't need to cast a haste spell anymore. We're going to place the final room, which is this guy. Um, it is a fodder room, which would give us more experience points. And it has a nuisance and a common. So two enemies for this one. Uh, when we get there, everybody's going to restore one wound. That's free. We don't have to do anything. It costs an action to play. And the player who's playing it is the rogue, master rogue. So we're not going to move. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay here, remove vulns with our minions. And so I have two bones that are going to be removed. And uh, we're going to uh, 
let them come to us. The action cost is zero for us to move in. Uh, we don't need to worry about going into that room yet. So um, we got plenty of time on the clock. So the paladin is going to just draw cards. So right now she's going to draw two. And then she's going to discard one and draw one. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting good hands. In fact, the hands are sometimes so good that I can't, I don't know what to discard anymore. So the uh, fighter gets two for free at the start. I probably could have moved into that next room. Um, so we got two for free to start. And these rush in ones are going to be very handy. So we got to keep those. This casting one is good for helping the wizard, but we could discard it. And right now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'm going to go ahead and discard these two. Draw two more. Oops, I got a draw pile over here. I ended up getting the casting back and the endure. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just hold. The wizard, same deal. <coughs> She has three decent cards here. So we're going to draw three. One, two, three. And the card that I desperately wanted was this one. And we got it. So she has uh, a location marker, which is just a crap card. We'll go ahead and, since she has two actions, we'll discard it and draw another one. <laughs> and uh, like I said, our rogue has one action. He's only holding two cards. We're going to keep both of those, and we'll draw four more. One, two, three, and four. And we got another charge, which is great. OK, so basically, we're, at the, we're going to end our round. Um, the timer is going to go down to five. Uh, I didn't even draw the enemies, but let me get the camera up here for you. So we're going to get a nuisance. So we got the giant vampiric slug, and we got a harpies, which is a con. And my apologies, someone's at the door. I will be right back. Okay, we were just getting ready to place our stuff here. So this is one creature that has nine health. This is brutal. And then the other one is nine creatures. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this one attacks four times. Wow. All right. We already used our Odin and our Ra. And I think I want to save up for the boss. So I don't want to necessarily do anything rash here. We have plenty of time on the clock. So we can methodically do this if we need to. And spend a turn to recover. But that's our situation. The action cost to move in is free. And that was intentional on our part. So here we go. Well, um, all right, I'm looking at the harpies. They have a plus two for fire and a minus one to be hit, which is a net of plus one. And the, um, the slug has a plus two to fire and a plus two to be hit and an arc plus two and ice plus two. So a lot of stuff hits the slug. Not as much hits the harpies. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to treat this just like it's a boss situation. And um, we're going to take out the harpies first, focus on the slug next. The harpies are awesome. They drop a lot of gold. And I'm looking at my situation here, going through the cards I have. We're going to play Inspiration whenever that slug dies. That'll give us nine experience points. 
as if we need them, but we do because we're going to blow through a lot right now. We need to we need to spend as many attack actions as we can. Um, I know I got to get into this next room and use attack actions there, but this is just like a boss thing. So we're going to move in with the wizard first, like we always do, and then somebody gets to attack. So we're going to go ahead and attack the wizard with the slug. And now I roll a nine for the slug and a five. A nine for the slug is two wounds on the wizard. So we're going to spend an experience point to deflect. And just to remind you, the deflect spell costs one experience point. And uh, we suffer two fewer wounds if I get a 10 or better. And I can pay one experience point to add two to the roll. So I'm going to roll. I rolled a six. That is only going to get me to an eight. But a six does deflect one of the wounds, but the other one gets through. So we got one wound on our our wizard. I wasn't expecting that, but that slug looks nasty. <clears throat> okay, so um, before I continue, I just realized I was reading some comments while I was on break here. And a couple questions were asked. The first one was, how does a cleric or paladin get more spells? And hopefully that's clear now, because uh, maybe this person was a couple videos behind. But the way a cleric gets spells is the divine powers. So see right there, it says, it says two. So that means she has the ability to have two spells. And you have to rely on that to, um, to get her done. Okay. Um, Next question was, is why didn't I get more spells for the wizard? Well, there is a problem with the wizard spells at a low level, and it's this. So, for example, there's this awesome fireball spell that you can cast at range zero, so you don't need to move in anymore. And you only need to roll a five to hit. But what's the prerequisite for it? Twelve focus. I only have two focus right now, folks. So I can't cast that spell. Now, um, got an Ice Storm. Awesome spell. Nine focus. This one, the Mouse Scout is just dumb. Uh, distraction, dumb. Deflect, just deflects more wounds, right? Uh, so that one's not bad. It costs seven gold to get. Uh, Enchanted Falcon. So you can summon it, and you have to spend one experience point to retain it. And it'll basically, if you roll four or better, it hits. One action, one health. It's not awful. Uh, spike trap. A shield. Ice lance. This one's a lot like ours. Um, it's a range zero spell, so we could get this one. <clears throat> Except um, we're not an ice specialist. We'll do fire blast. How about that one? Five focus. So when you look at the spells, there's nothing to take until you start to get more focus. <clears throat> so right now, the wizard only has two focus. But once the wizard's level six, she has 12 focus. It's still not an awful lot, but it's at least enough to cast that fireball one time. So those spells are one hit wonders. They're not things that you can routinely just cast over and over again. So I'm not a big fan of that. Um, Although the explosion part is nice, which is what we're going to take advantage of right here. Um, there was a third question. Now I can't remember what it was. Holy cow. Somebody asked a question, and it thought it was about the clerics. I know we, we answered the divinity one, but I thought there was another question. And it was just, oh, I got to just show you the card. Oh, the divinity. This has a one minus. So they are correct. Um, if you start with one power or less, you start with 13 divinity. So what they were s saying is that the squire actually has 13 more divinity than he currently has. And I agree. So here's 10. And I'm going to add three more for 13. 
And he's going to need it because he's going to be healing right now. <laughs> we already took a wound. <clears throat> All right, so I thought I was going to be cute and deflect these wounds. I did not. We are going to spend an experience point and roll four dice against the harpies because we want to kill as many of them as we can. We're going to get a plus one to our roll. So that means a five or better hits. Here we go. Oh, um, we're spending one action and four experience points. All right, here we go. Hit, hit, hit. Hit. We just did four hits. That was fantastic. So since player two took a wound, we're going to take both of those out. One, two, three, and four. Just like that. Okay, they get to go again. We're going to have them attack player four, which is the paladin. So there's a big fat miss. So paladin gets a vulnerable. And then we're going to do the other action for the wizard and four more experience points. And we're going to roll four dice again. Hit, hit, miss. Also a miss. So we're going to roll re-roll two of them. And we got a third hit. So three hits. Uh, I'll take it. <clears throat> One, two, and three. So there's only two harpies left. And we'll go ahead and have uh, this one attack the wizard again. Got a four. That is a wound. So we'll spend an experience point to deflect the wound. And I rolled a seven, which more, it definitely deflects the wound. So we paid off there. No vulnerables on the uh, wizard because she keeps taking wounds because of that vampiric sludge. Slug. Okay, wizard is out of actions unless I want to <coughs> um, do more. At the moment, I don't want to spend any of my cards. We're saving them for the final boss, even though this feels like a final boss. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do instead is we're going to move the fighter in and then we're going to get another reaction. We'll do this one for player three. It's a two, which is a miss. So vulnerable goes on the squire. All right. And then player one, <clears throat> we're going to... Oh my gosh, we got some stuff we can do here. Uh, he's going to play that to cause the wizard to not take a wound. So that wound's going to go off the wizard. We're good to go there. And then... Oh, he gets two cards at the start of his turn. And I have to count his cards here. Yeah, he has to discard both of them. I found um, the wizard had her own card. <coughs> Endure. So the wizard played to make sure she doesn't get a wound. So the fighter's going to discard that Endure card so we can get the bonus attack. So we're going to attack the Harpy. They got a minus one to be hit. So this is actually a tough attack, but he rolled a nine, which is all we needed. So he'll kill the one that's targeting him. So Harpy's going to attack the Paladin. Uh, that three becomes a five, which is still a miss, but the Paladin now goes up to another level of vulnerable. And now the Harpies are done. Okay. So we have a couple of vulnerables to remove, just two actually, no, three. And then of course we can see if we're in shadows and all that jazz, which um, I haven't done yet. 
Um, sure, let's do that part first. Let's see if we're in shadows. That's the mini me. That's a fail, which is okay because we don't care. And then the major me is a six. Um, even without the experience point sent, that's good. I'm still going to spend the experience point because I always retcon that, and so I'm going to retcon it negatively, even though I know I passed. <coughs> so experience point spent, he's hidden. Uh, we're going to use our thief to the mini me, two actions to get rid of the two vulnerables on player four, the paladin. We have one more on the squire, but I'm going to wait. Um, I'm going to use our rogue, the master rogue, to fire a bolt. Because uh, we're going to see if um, we can kill that harpy. And I rolled an 8, which is really good, because since he's in stealth, that becomes an 11, and that's a kill. Excellent. So Harpy is down. Harpy gives us one gold, one silver, one copper, which is quite amazing, actually. So there we go, there we go, and there we go. And um, we are in a fodder room, I believe. No, we're not. So we're going to get the six experience points written on the top. <clears throat> oh, and the harpies actually got two attacks. So we were able to kill the harpies before they did any of their attacks. I uh, didn't draw enough attack markers. So uh, that part's good. Um, I said, uh, what did we get? Six experience. One two, three, four, five, and six. We've definitely spent that much. All right, now we get to continue. So Rogue did a fantastic job. Now the Rogue has one more action. He, um, he will wait. He'll remove the vulnerable after the Squire goes. So we're going to move the Squire up to get some divinity points here. Um, actually, we're going to wait. We're going to do the um, Paladin up. Paladin is going to attack. And remember, we have the wing, Ring of Stunning. Pay one experience when you inflict a wound to also inflict a vulnerable. Haha. -ha. So here we go. So we got a nine there, which is excellent. His B hit is a plus two. So we for sure hit this thing. So we put one wound on him. And then we also get to put a vulnerable on him for the cost of one experience point, and I am definitely going to do that. All right, that was one action for the Paladin. Now I'm going to see if I can get rid of a card for another action. Um, yeah, so I'm going to spend this card to get another action. Here we go. Now it has a vulnerable on it, so uh, it just it's a hit. And I'm going to spend another experience point, put another vulnerable on it. So now this is a plus four. Then I'm going to do my last action for the Paladin. And that's a hit. Um, now it does need a uh, three penetration. This would not be enough, but the vulnerable is more than enough to get through. So we get to put another vulnerable on because I'm going to just keep putting them on. And that's another experience point and another wound. So he's at three out of nine now. So Paladin's done. That was three hits, which would be two divinity each. But with the humble, that becomes just three total divinity. And I need to make change. No, I don't. So three more divinity for Joanna. OK, now our squire is going to move forward. And he is in an awesome position. He has a vulnerable on himself. That's one. He has a vulnerable here for two and two more for there for three. I don't even, I think we just got, we're rolling for penetration. That's all we're doing here. That penetrates. Well, he gets plus three to his penetration right there. Um, I don't even think it matters what we roll. It's an automatic hit. So we got a fourth wound on this guy. And that was one, two, three, four divinity. 
So I'm going to put 6 back at the bank and take out a 10. He has 30 divinity now. So he's going to use his other action, attack again. Doesn't matter what he rolls. That's a 3 plus a 6 is 9. And uh, he puts on another wound. 2, 3, 4, 5. And he gets another uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 divinity. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, Smithers. All right. Uh, the squire is done. Now the rogue, the master rogue, will remove the squire's vulnerable. And then we still got um, two actions with Gareth, the fighter. I'm not going to bother rolling because it doesn't matter. I hit no matter what with Gareth. So um, two, three, four. He has five wounds. Uh, Gareth is going to be able to put on two more, which makes it seven. And the dude is not dead. So I'm thinking I'm going to play some cards here. I have two attack cards that I'm going to play. And we're going to finish them off. Um, I have plenty of time. I guess I could, I could hold on to those cards and save them for the boss. I just feel like we're going to annihilate this boss. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to finish him off because we got all these vulnerables on him, which makes him real easy to hit. And he does have a um, penetrate a three or a cover of three, which is not the easiest to get past. So uh, we killed him. It took us two more cards. And I think I have a bad habit of saving my cards for the final battle and not using enough in the middle. But it's working. So why break something that's working? So we got a silver. <clears throat> and um, because of our inspiration card, we're going to get nine experience for this. And we get five more. So 14. That was a nuisance hostile. Holy cow. So 14 experience. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we're maxed out. So I need five more. Holy buckets. Okay. I'm happy with that. End of round. Everybody refresh. I gotta stand up, move the timer to four. We're gonna move to this room, which has a advancement cost of one. And everybody would actually heal a wound. I didn't even, I totally forgot about that. So we gotta get there for advancement cost of one. I happen to have a charge card, so we don't have to spend an action. Everybody, gets to move in. Uh, the Paladin, for example, only has four cards. So she's going to spend one action to draw cards and get up to six. And it costs one to go into the room. So she will pay one of her cards to get into there. And in doing so, I'm going to move everything off again. Paladin goes in. And we're going to get three divinity. I just got to figure out how we're going to represent that because I'm running out of tokens. Five, nine, 12, 15. There we go. And then she just got three. Wow. So I, I got a 20 and a 15 on, on her. We have plenty of divinity. And we got four turns left. We're doing great. Um, OK, that was her action to get the card that moved her in. Now we're going to move our paladin, our squire in. The squire gets to move in for three, free. Now let's do the rogue. That will give us a copper. And the rogue. Uh, moves in for free. The mini rogue 
has to pay one. So we'll do the location marker. And then the wizard has to pay one and Gareth moves in for free. The wizard will pay this. All right, so the wizard will spend an action to draw three cards. Um, she got nothing noteworthy. The fighter gets two cards at the start of his turn. He drew two location markers. How many does he have? One, two. He has four cards, so he'll keep them both for now. And um, we actually got two actions with everybody. I don't need to do a luck pick or anything. So I'm going to start with the rogue. Uh, the rogue only has three cards, so we're going to... No, he's got four cards. We're going to draw two. So just some throwaway cards, but that's okay. He'll take them. And then the uh, wizard has one, two, three, four, five, six. She won't draw anymore. Uh, fighter's not drawing anymore. The paladin has five. So she'll draw one more, and it was garbage. This is all that's left of the deck, and then we'd have to reshuffle. But we're going to go ahead and end the round. And uh, I know we had extra actions left, but that's okay. Everybody recharges. We got focus. Everything's back. We're full and ready. We got three turns to kill these guys. Let's do it. I could spend six divinity if I want to move that timer back, but I don't. I'm going to bring this forward. Look at that. Entrance cost of four. That's a brutal cost. And uh, also we have hot plus four. I don't know what it means by one action to activate. I guess we got to spend an action to go in and activate it. But uh, so only one of us needs to do it. Well, I'm going to use my master rogue to do that because we never attack with him anyways. So I'm pretty sure we have a charge with one of these guys. Or otherwise I made a big mistake. Yep, here it is. So there's the charge. So we're all going to move in for free for three experience points. Okay, so we're all going to move in for free. Uh, there's going to be an action to have to move up to the fighting spot. Uh, it costs an action to activate, so we're going to use the rogue action to activate. Uh, there's a heat environment thing, um, so we're going to all have to roll or take damage for that. Uh, what else? I still got to draw the uh, targets. We'll do that in a second. But let me go through my cards, and I'm going to lay out the ones that I need for this. So we got a let's go. That's going to reduce the movement for everybody by one. So that four now becomes a three. We definitely need that. All right. Going through the fighter cards. All right. He's got two great cards. Um, we're going to draw two cards for him at the beginning of the round. And it's these two. I'm just going to discard them. They're trash. All right, so Fighter's got some great cards. We got another Let's Go from the Wizard. So that's now, it costs two to go into that room. All right. Two is the cost to go into the room. The Paladin has a Rush In card which reduces the entrance cost by three uh, for herself. So she will be able to move in for no cost other than that card. So she's in and she gains three divinity. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Next up is our squire who has a movement of one. So we just have to pay one card for him. And there it is. So Paladin has him covered. All right, uh, next we have, let's do the rogue. The rogue has a movement of one, so he just needs one card to go in. Here's his one card. The rogue is in, and there's another beautiful shiny copper waiting for us. 
And then the buddy that needs to go in, we're going to do rush in. When you or any hero are paying an entrance cost, add three to their movement value. So we're going to have to spend two experience points there. And we have it, so that's not a concern. And so that gets the rogue buddy in. And now we just got the wizard. I think, oh, the wizard and Gareth. We got the squire in already. Um, yeah. So uh, Gareth has one movement, so he just has to pay one card. He has a location marker. Done. And then the wizard needs to move in. And we have this for the wizard. I have to pay two experience points, but that'll get the wizard in lickety split. All right, everybody's in the room. Uh, we had to pay one action to activate the room. No problem. So now I'm going to resolve the heat thing. So starting with the squire. That is a fail. He takes a wound. Paladin. Pass. Gareth. Pass. Wizard. Pass. Uh, Mini-me. Pass. Major-me. Pass. All right, everybody else passed. Okay, now we got to do... This is actually the part that I'm getting tired of the most, is drawing the, uh, the targets. Out of all the things, I'm having fun, but the targets is just like, oh, i got to do this again. All right, here we go. There are six targets for the fire ants. I can move the camera a little bit closer here for you. One, two, three, four... Five, six. And then we have one target for the queen. But she attacks four times. Like so. Okay. So the question is, can I kill those fire ants? There's six of them. I don't know. I truly don't know. The queen bee has six health. I think I can. It's a good Thomas the Train thing, but I think I can. I think I can. That's not Thomas the Train. Who says I think I can? The little engine that could. I think that's all he's owned by, is the little engine that could. Okay, anyways. I have not forgotten. We are blowing the horn. So we're going to start with Odin's horn. And we get to roll six dice now, instead of four. So here's three. I need to roll six. There's one. This was an eight. That's two. That's a miss. There's three, four. So four bonus actions. Yes! We are going to clobber them. Okay, and then we're going to do Ra the Creator. Ra Ra Rasputin. Russia's greatest love machine. Uh, five is what we need. And we're going to roll five dice. One, two. Two. So we get to put two vulnerables on. And I always like to put it on the boss. So we're going to do a plus four, plus two on that boss. So now we got to go in and kill as many of these things as we can. As much as I, you know, the fire gets a minus two, the fire ants also get a plus two, which means that the fire balances out. So we're going to move in with the uh, wizard. Now that does cost an action, except I have a melee card. Ding, 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 ding. So that pays her action to move in. And of course, after she does that, we get a retaliation. So we're going to go ahead and attack the paladin. Oh, I rolled an eight. An eight is one fire damage. So the paladin will use one of her toughness. She's down to one now to shake that off. 
Easy peasy. Okay, and then on player two, she's going to spend one action plus four experience points. One, two, three, four. And then another experience point to roll four dice against those ants. And then I also have a casting spell. Pay two experience points to play this card when they declare an attack to add plus two plus one to all rolls. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So now I hit on a four with all of these. So there's a hit and two misses. And then here's the fourth die. Three misses. Okay, the reroll lets me reroll three dice if I spend another experience. And I will. There's two dice. That one's still a miss. Man, I, I even like made the hits better and it was still tough. So I do hit with three. So one, two, three. No, I'll leave this one, three. All that effort, just to, but it did kill three of them. I have to say, that's not bad. All right, now we're gonna, the boss is gonna attack player six. Ooh, rolled a nine. Player six is going to take one and then attract one guard. So one wound on player six. Uh, and then they attract another guard. So that means it's guards plural. So the guards for this are two ants. So uh, here's one. And, and normally you would think they would go in the guard track, but um, DVG did clarify that they don't in this case. All right, so that means we got to attack again with our wizard. We just got, we killed three and now two more arrived. So the wizard's going to play the other action and one, two, three, four more experience points. We're going to roll four of them. I need a six. There's one, two hits, and a miss. Three hits, and a miss. Now we're going to roll for the miss. Three hits. So one, two, three. All right. I think we attacked with player six. Now we're going to attack player five. I rolled a five, which is a hit. Another wound comes out. Okay. All right, we're going to attack again with the wizard. So I am using attack cards to pay for the actions. And I happen to have two of them right here. Attack, attack. So we're going to do one more. And I'm going to spend an experience point again to roll four dice. And again, it's a six. We're attacking the fire ants. So there's one hit, two hits. I don't need to roll anymore because these are both hit. Now, one thing I just realized, I should have been playing vulnerables whenever I miss with an explosion. That was my bad. Uh, that's 100% my fault there. So uh, the fire ants are expo disposed of. So now we just have the boss and the boss has just one more attack left, and that's going to be against player five. Since player five took a wound, there's no vulnerable. That's a nine, which is, oh, it's a wound, and it's going to attract guards again. So this boss is a little peskier. So now we got two more guards, and we can't at attack the boss until those guards are gone. And now we got another wound on player five. 
Well, I'm going to go with the uh, paladin, or the squire. Squire's going to pay one action, and we're going to heal. So I rolled a two, which means he's going to heal two wounds instead of, you know, three. But he's going to heal both of the wounds that are on our mini-me that the mini-me just took. So he's done, and that means player four is going to get attacked now. But this time, it's by the fire ants. So a six for the fire ants is a miss. So that just means the paladin gets a vulnerable. All right, and uh, I'm going to spend another three points for the paladin. And we're going to heal again. A four is still enough for two wounds. So the squire is going to heal himself. I said paladin, I meant squire. The squire is going to heal himself and also heal the major rogue. So all wounds have been healed now. Okay. So now they get to attack player two. And they rolled a nine, which is attract one. Oh my goodness, another one is coming out. But no actual damage. Who is player two? Oh, the wizard. So another one comes out. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Remember, we have four extra actions. I'm going to spend two of them and an experience point, and we're going to attack with the wizard again. Here we go. So one, two hits, miss. Another miss. Uh, and uh, now I get to roll for the misses. Two hits, that's all. So I'm going to kill those two that just came. And I'm not going to forget it this time. We're going to put a vulnerable on this one. Okay, so. The enemy is done with all their attacks. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack with Gareth the fighter. And he's going to discard a card to... Uh, give himself a bonus attack and he's also going to play a melee card so he can get in range for free without having to spend an action so he's going to move up and then he's going to attack the final uh, ant here so he rolled a 2 and a 5 that becomes a 4 and he adds 2 more to make it 6 He's one short. My goodness. So this becomes a four now. All right, he's going to spend. Well, we have our rogue here. Our rogue, let's see if the mini rogue is in sh shadows. No, the major rogue will spend an experience point. Uh, three, four, five for the boots, six for the objective. He only needed a five, so he's in shadows. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attack with a crossbow. So I need to find... There we go. That one with the plus four, plus two. So six plus four is ten. Uh, that's more than enough, so this one dies. And yes, those dang fire ants are finally dead again. Um, so now we can go after the boss. And the rogue did his job. Okay, so we got the mini rogue. We actually only have one vulnerable on all of our guys. Because this boss was hitting us and not just doing vulnerables. So, um... And again, I forgot to use my leather armor with the squire, but that's okay. We healed him. We are at two bonus actions that are still left and we got the boss so it's peanut butter attack time here we're going to start with a paladin because the paladin i did not forget has a plus two plus one for all hand-to-hand -hand attack rolls while in the objective location so we're going to discard a card so she can use her melee speed and get a bonus attack and with a plus two plus one and this plus four that's here 
Uh, that's already a plus six, plus three. Uh, I hit without even needing to roll. She just needs a five, and she has a minus one to her penetration. Okay? So she's going to automatically do uh, one damage, and then she could spend an experience point to add a vulnerable, which we're going to do because I want to make sure that anybody that attacks this thing is going to be able to kill it. So we have two bonus actions here. Both of them are going to be Paladin. So we're going to do two more wounds there. And then she has her two regular actions for two more wounds. So that's four total wounds that she's going to uh, put on the clinic here. And so that puts this thing up to five wounds. And that means that she hit it one, two, three, four, five times at two divinity each, subtracts the one, she's going to get five divinity for that. She is a powerhouse right now. And then uh, Gareth himself has two actions left. He just needs one of them to kill it, and it's murder, death, killed. And uh, nobody has any wounds, so there's no healing that needs to be done, because the squire is doing a fantastic job of keeping everybody healed. The vulnerable will go away at the end of the round. We get ourselves a win. So the fire ants are going to give us one copper, one silver. The room is a fodder room, which means we get one experience point for every dead enemy. We have six enemies here. They summon guards twice. That was four more for 10. This is 15. And then they attracted one at least once. So I'm going to say 16 experience points I'm getting for this. So that's a, that's a lot of, that's a lot of pancakes. All right, 16 experience points. This is the fun part. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We still had two more. <laughs> so we did lose some experience points there. And then here, uh, we're going to get uh, one copper. And two points worth of goodies. So I'm going to bring the camera back. Oh, by the way, the Paladin, you might be saying she had to spend an action to move in. No, she did not. We had that card. I forgot to account for that. And just so you know, I even had one more. So somebody else could have moved in too. Um, I did not have any extra attacks anymore though. Although I had more than enough. And yes, we get two. Here's one. We're going to put this back and take the two. It's a divine potion. It has an expend on it. Pays six divinity of the cost of a power. I'm just going to take the two gold. We need the gold. So I get two gold for that. And then we get five gold for the mission. And there she be. Now, I had predicted I was going to get somewhere around 10 because I wanted to get double the reward of the final. Uh, let me clean up some stuff here. So that's done. That's done. Sorry, got a lot of cleanup here. Three nuisance rooms and one common. Okay. We cleared our town. So we got another one that bites at us. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. That's one gold and one copper. 
So I took care of that. And then the new town is Lafford. So we're going to put that, oh, that's way up here. Okay, that's our first renowned town. Uh, we are nearing the end of this campaign here. Okay, so what did we get? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gold, nine gold. Now granted, some of that was because of our investment, but it doesn't matter. Nine gold just from that. Here's 10, 11, 12, 13, one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna exchange it now. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So that's two more gold. All right, so we ended up getting uh, close to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We ended up getting sixteen gold. I predicted I wanted uh, ten to twelve, so we got four over. I'm happy with that. And uh, this renowned town, by the way, uh, what is it, La Ford? It's going to be Thorgadur. We're going to get seven gold for this one. So very happy with that. And look, I mean, my goodness. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to do three rooms with this one. I was like, those are all monsters? No, we're going to do three rooms, a nuisance, and then a middle, and then a, a big one at the end. So it's using, what's the dungeon called? Grand's Cave and Grand. All right, I finally found it. Grand's Cave. It's a dungeon fodder. Action and two experience points to activate. Has some heat going on. And then Grand, I found him as well. Took me a while. There was quite a few cards in here. All right, and then uh, look at that guy. 12 health, three attacks. He has crush, so we'll have to look up what that means. It probably means he crushes through armor. But he's got a regen of one, so he'll regenerate health. He penetrates two. I don't think we have to worry about that. None of us have any armor, so we've played the whole game without armor. But he doesn't look like he's very fun. So we said there's going to be three rooms. So that means it's going to be here. And there's a timer of seven. And then Grand is gonna be there. So, um, okay, that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. That's moving to the next mission. But let's level up. So I've been taking on the attitude of leveling up the Paladin uh, as much as possible. Um, the Paladin's doing quite well on our own. I actually wanna get that blessed longsword instead of this stupid mace. Um, the Blessed Longsword is going to cost three gold. It hits on a six, but it no longer has the penetration penalty. Um, but she needs a hand-to-hand -hand of two and divine powers, which she doesn't have the hand-to-hand -hand of two yet. And see, you could spend divinity points to now get a plus two to your rolls. And that's going to basically guarantee that she's just going to hit all the time. So, um, that's for him. And then for Gareth, I want to improve his too because I am noticing that we're starting to miss every now and then. So he could, for example, take a battle axe. 
but man, they they need a lot of crap to hit. Uh, Dwarven Great Axe. I'm sure you have to be Dwarven. Yep, you do. If you are a Dwarven, you get a plus two, plus one. How cool is that? That's a reason to maybe pick a Dwarf Fighter. Yeah, all these Dwarven weapons have bonuses if you're Dwarven. I didn't even realize that. So there's a plain longsword. Uh, this one here, I think, is perfect for him. Uh, I don't know if there's any better weapon out there, actually, for him. Uh, so he hits with a 6 on this one instead of a 7. So it's one better. Um, looking again. There is a Blessed Mace. Uh, it also spends Divinity. There's a Great Mace. There's a Broadsword, but he needs Strong. we got to level him up for stuff like that. All right, so I think these weapons are going to be improvements. Now, to have the Blessed Longsword, she needs to have a hand-to-hand -hand of two. So that means if I leveled her up one more time, she won't have it. I would have to spend 14 gold to get her hand-to-hand -to, -hand to two. Yeah, let's do it. Let's spend 14 gold. Uh, one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now this is crazy, I know, because some of you are sitting there saying, "You're sitting on a level one wizard." Yes, yes, I am, because that fire hand spell is all you need the entire game. <laughs> but it's important to have that fire hand spell. But it's all you need the entire game, and I didn't sit on the wizard. Look at this. I spent seven gold on the wizard and then two more for nine. So we've spent nine gold on wizard skills. It's just we haven't leveled up the wizard. All right, so now she has a hand-to-hand -hand value of plus two. She actually is going to draw five cards at the beginning of every round now. Isn't that insane? She's going to get, she has a toughness of three and she now has a third divine power and she'll get a fourth divine power if I level her up one more time. But that costs 12 just to get one more level. Holy cow. She'll literally draw six cards every single round. I mean, DBG just basically threw the kitchen sink at her. She actually gets plus one action? Look at this. Plus one action. No wonder she's so expensive. She draws a whole hand every turn. Plus one action. A toughness of four. Penetration of two. Four divine powers. My gosh. All right. Well, that's good. All right. Uh, let's see. So she has a... She has three toughness now. Oh, I don't want that one. There we go. She is level five. We have spent a crap ton of points on her. So here we go. If I sell the mace, I get two gold and three copper. I get that back. So this is three gold and one silver. Uh, so if I do the math real quick, two copper is one silver, right? So I have to pay one gold to get to here, and I'm going to have one copper left over. That's, that's my math. I hope I did that right. So she has the Blessed Longsword now, and I'll pay one gold and take one copper back. Okay, now the old longsword is one gold, three copper, and this is two gold, three copper, so the math's a lot easier. I just need to pay one gold, and now he's got a longsword, and I have that right here. That's everything. That's all the money. I'm out. Okay, when we finish this next mission, we are going to earn seven gold. We are going to fight higher level monsters, which are going to give us more gold. I, at least that's my hope. Um, just this boss alone is going to drop a level four wipe item, which is going to be worth, if I don't want it, four gold. I guess what I'm trying to tell myself is I am going to be able to level up these other guys eventually. Um, 
Note for the future. DVG made this paladin like uber, 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 uber. <laughs> um, if you just went with a cleric, you're going to have to figure out something else because you're not going to be able to take the squire. I mean, you could bring him along. He just doesn't, that follower skill doesn't apply. I don't think clerics have the liege concept. There's no such thing as a liege and follower for the clerics. So you can't get like a, a mini cleric. But here's what I do recommend. Take a cleric instead of the paladin. This paladin's way too much. Um, I mean, I'm enjoying it, but it's like, come on, we don't need all this. Um, take a cleric instead of a paladin. He'll be cheaper. And he'll be maxed out level by 30 gold. She's at 31, and she's not even maxed out level yet. Okay? Then take somebody like Rika. There's a lot of different clerics. There's another one, too, you can get. She starts with minor heal and stand firm. So this is probably the one that uh, I think a lot of players in the community probably like to use. Uh, that other cleric that I was using in my playthrough that I deleted, um, she starts with minor heal, and I don't remember what the other one is. But like, look at her. She gets studded armor at level 3. Um, the other one starts with a mace. So this one has a table, so she just hits on a 7. The other one actually gets a mace, and so the mace, of course, hits on a 5. So the other one is more attacky. This one's a little bit less attacky and more just heal, heal, heal. Um, but here's my point. Get the divinity points, folks. Um, this one's an Odin. I think the other one's an Odin, too. That might be your drawback. We need one that's raw. And uh, I don't know if there is. But you know what? You make her Odin and then make your cleric raw. Because as much as we like Odin, Ra's got some pretty nice spells, too. There's a full-blown heal. There's a wrath. Look at that. Just inflicts vulnerables. Fire touch. This is exactly like fire hands. Um, in fact, you know what? Don't even bring a wizard next time. Just bring a cleric and have fire touch. That's just as good. <laughs> um, the problem is the wizard's got all those spells. Like like the you can be um, fire hands and you can take pyromancy. Like there's things that boost it. Whereas I don't think you can boost this very much other than just bringing along holy water. Uh, you can summon cobras, which can do a wound. There's a stand firm, just like Odin. Flame weapon. One of your hand-to-hand -hand weapons gains fire for the turn. Uh, I'm going to have to look up what that means. Light the way. Attack blessing. Uh, get an extra attack for the turn. Flames of wrath. There you go. Uh, you could just cast it. It's a fire attack. You just basically you do it at range zero cost you five divinity you know you roll four to five one wound six to eight two wounds nine or more th three wounds the only difference is this is not an explosion so you have to that's just one target that's the only drawback there but you got you got your spells here you can uh, uh you know what is missing from raw though is that haste spell that we're using the haste spell is pretty nice um there's also another divinity i forgot um the third one, like the, uh, it looks like an Indian uh, type of god, uh, Vishnu or whatever. Um, oh, and then I also forgot we could have bought our boots, which I still haven't purchased. But anyways, I think it's interesting. You don't have to go the paladin route. You can, you can do a couple clerics, and I think you'd do just fine. I, you gotta write the find that right combination because you really do want Ra and Odin together. I think they're really nice. But you know what? You could have two Odin clerics. And then uh, basically you could roll for extra actions twice or four times around. Because it's not limited uh, to two times per adventure just for Odin. It's two times per adventure per cleric. At least that's my understanding. Uh, it's a divine power, divine aid. When entering a location, twice total per adventure. You know what? I would. I think if you're a purist, you might say that's limited to two. So that's why you want to have two clerics that are different powers. So that way, um, one of them, you know, is is getting a divine intervention in another way, like we're doing here. So yeah, I I started these playthroughs singing, the wizards are the bomb. The wizards are the bomb. You need the wizards. Now I'm like the clerics are the bomb. But it is interesting though because my wizard is the MVP for killing people. 
um, the paladin is cleanup. And and you know what we're not needing very much? The fighter. He is used sometimes. So that's another thing to consider. Do I need a fighter in my party? I don't think you do. Uh, part of me thinks, you know, maybe bring along two wizards instead. Uh, do I need two rogues in my party? Uh, no, you don't. But that rogue that gives you a copper every time you move into a room? Mwah. That, that, that is paid for things. So I just tell you, you know, having that rogue that just all he does is remove vulnerables every time he takes an action, it's fantastic. You, you really do need that type of character. I, I don't, you know, there's no harm in it. Um, you know, having Gareth the fighter with you, was that a bad thing? No, it wasn't. It's just, he's just like pudding on the pie. Anyways, I'm, I am gushing. I do enjoy the game. The rule book sucks. It's a good game. Is it a little rinse and repeat? Yes, it is. Um, I'm not experiencing enough variety in every level of dungeon that I feel like I'm getting a different experience or I have to do a different strategy. I'm really not. But the characters and how you level them up and how you use their skills, that is brilliant. I'd, and that's the thing I love about DVG. They come up with good stuff. They just need somebody to help them with their organization. So anyways, uh, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome as always. And I have a phone that is going to be dying. My camera's dying. So I got to take a break for a long time here. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed it so far. We're now in the renowned missions.